All righty, here we go. We are live. Are you guys there? Can you hear me? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Okay, so this is where I'm going to start today. Well, I have a couple things that I want to talk about today, but I'm just going to start saying, oh, halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. I'm saying that because we are six jurors in, six jurors in, which means we're halfway there to the 12 people that they will use, um, that they are going to use as jurors. They have already sworn in six people. Six people have been chosen. They have sworn in some folks and they've asked them to come back tomorrow. I am going to talk about all of this in a moment, but oh, good day. Thank you so much. I'm just going to acknowledge some people and then I'm going to talk about. So hi to Drake. Thank you so much for joining us. Good day to Larry Lee. I appreciate it. Linda Lewis. Good afternoon, Don. Hi. I love the smiley face. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Hit the thumbs up button and also make sure that you subscribe. Thumbs up. I like that. All right. So do that. Hi, Jody Bristow. Thank you. Hi, Marianne. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Austin's Art. Hello. Hope you're doing well today. I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny Ross. Greetings from Los Angeles. I'm in New York. Good to see you. Sandra Kelly. Hi, Don and everyone. Hello, hello, hello. You, are you guys ready to talk today? Are you guys ready to have a conversation? Are you ready to be part of this community? Okay, so this is what I want to talk about. We are going, this is, this is Trump related. Let me fix my fro. This is Trump related. Okay, it is Trump related. We're going to get to the trial and, and the jury selection in just a moment. Hi, you guys are so excited today. Hi, Bettina. Hi, Rose G. Hi, D-Day. Hi, Krista Blake. Hi, Mary R. Hi, Nikki News on narcissism. Hello. I appreciate it. Can we talk about what's happening in Congress before we go to this? Because this is also MAGA related. This is Donald Trump related. Donald Trump has taken over the Republican Party. Why? Because Republicans keep falling for this, right? They keep falling for this. They keep thinking that they can bring the Republican Party back to the party that it once was, that it can bring it back to a party that was at times centrist. You know, all both parties have their issues. But they keep thinking that they can compromise with the MAGA folks. Come on now. How often have people tried to compromise with the MAGA folks and get in trouble? You cannot give them an inch. Why? Because they say, you give a person an inch, you give it, you know what, an inch, it'll take a mile. They'll take a light year at this. Why? Because Republicans in Congress are now trying to oust the House Speaker again. Mike Johnson just became House Speaker, I mean, yesterday, like a half a second ago. And now they're trying to oust him again. They just did it with Kevin McCartney, Kevin McCarthy. They just did it. And so when I hear Republicans saying, well, that's not the Republican Party. It's not the Republican Party. It's not the party I know. It's not the party I know. And then they do nothing. You can't say that. It is, I don't believe the Republican Party will ever be the, the, the Jack Kemp Republican Party that it once was. It won't even be the Ronald Reagan party that it once was. It won't even be the George Bush party that it once was. And, and when I say that, I realize that there are MAGA folks who are saying, yay, we don't want that party. That's not the party they want. They want an extremist party. And that's what they got. In 2016, Republicans elite thought they could hold their nose. They could use Trump, right? They were, he was their Trojan horse. They could use Trump to achieve their own ends. And guess what? They didn't like him. I know they didn't like him because I spoke to a lot of them, even those who, those who ended up working for him. They didn't really like him but he was the center of power. They thought they could control him, could control him for their own benefit. That did not happen. So now, Donald Trump has turned the GOP into a cult, has turned it into a cult. That's what it is, a cult. So they, and they, McCarthy empowered the far-right Freedom Caucus in order to achieve the speakership, okay? Remember, he gave them all these key positions. He did all these compromises. None of it worked. They ousted him as soon as they could because even he wasn't far right enough. I spoke with Adam Kinzinger about this um, in, on my show just last week. You should watch the show with Adam Kinzinger. I think it's called Elder Abuse because he said what Donald Trump is doing to the Republican Party, including getting people to donate to him, is, is akin to elder abuse. Um, I mean, look at, what's, look at what's happening over at The Daily Wire with Candace Owens. 
and Ben Shapiro. It's crazy. The reason I, I talk about that, about what Adam Kinzinger said, because I remember being on CNN and warning Republicans, saying, Republicans, man, what are you doing? You're following this guy. He's leading you down a primrose path. And then all of a sudden, you're going to end up in a, in a briar patch. And that's what happened. And they called me a lefty liberal. And now conservative traditional Republicans are saying the same thing. I hate to say No, I don't hate to say it. I told you so. I told you so. Now they're trying. They are in chaos. So while Donald Trump is criming, while he's in court, the Biden administration is administering. They're leading. He's presidenting. So, and they only had themselves to blame. The ha- Mike Johnson says, you know what? I am not going to step down. But he may not have a choice. They may oust Mike Johnson. Let me know what you think about that. Let's talk about that. And then I promise you, I promise you, I promise you that I'm going to get to the trial. So let's talk about House Speaker. Can you imagine? Out. Question mark. House Speaker out. Can you imagine if I did like a Potato, potato, (laughs) like Dan Quayle. House Speaker out. Do you think the House Speaker is going to be out? Do you think Republicans are, should, what should they do? What should Republicans do at this point? Also, give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. If you haven't um, hit the thumbs up, make sure you do it. Okay, so let's take some of these things. So, um, hey, Don, you called Trump sleep Don, but he never called Biden sleep Joe. How's that fair? Well, how you call yourself an independent but aren't? Well, I am. Donald Trump fell asleep. He was asleep yesterday in the court. If I see see Joe Biden falling asleep, then I'll call it out. But guess what? Joe Biden did not come up with the moniker or the nickname Sleepy Don. He he, He wasn't calling people names. Donald Trump was calling people names. He called Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, yet he falls asleep. So all I'm saying, uh, what's your name? Shri Harsha. All I'm saying is that you have to have the same standards for yourself. So if you're going to be in a public space, especially a trial where everyone is watching you, the world, and you're going to fall asleep, then people should be allowed to call you Sleepy Don if, if you call people names, similar names. I'm rubber, your glue, whatever you say goes back to you or whatever, whatever that is. That's what it is. So Clarence Fields says he should be out. Clarence is following the rules here. Please be respectful, everyone. I will answer everybody's questions. As long as you're respectful, it doesn't mean you have to agree with me. So I want to know, Clarence Fields says he should be out. Why do you think he should be out, Clarence Fields? That's what I want to know. Because I think they're upset. I know they're upset. They're upset because Mike Johnson is keeping the government open. Mike Johnson is making compromises and actually um, doing what you should do when you are governing people. You know, he's very conservative. He has his things. He's from Louisiana. He's from my home state. I think it's weird that he monitors, he and his son monitor each other's internet, whatever. I think that's a little bizarre. But um, he seems to be at least trying to keep the government going, uh, at least trying to keep the democracy intact in some way. And guess what? Republicans don't like that. AJ says, fire MTG, MTJ, MTG, meaning Mar- Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think a lot of people would like that because what she's doing is really not helpful there. Um, so Jody Bristow says, if Speaker Johnson does what needs to be done, I think Democrats will save him. That is the thing. Democrats, should they? That is a better question. Do you think Democrats should save Mike Johnson? Because Mike Johnson seems to be cooperating at least somewhat with Democrats and keeping the government going. And now Democrats could be the one, ones that end, end up saving him and keeping his speakership. Democrats may have to save MAGA Mike, who just met with Donald Trump because he's not MAGA enough. He was down there for some sort of summit with Donald Trump, some sort of you know kumbaya with Donald Trump just the past weekend. I guess that didn't work. That didn't work because now they're trying to oust him. My question is that I want you, if you moderators, to please put this a poll. Should Democrats save 
MAGA Mike Johnson speakership. Should Democrats save MAGA Mike Johnson's speakership? Tasha Libra for Life says, be an adult. If you give it, you should be able to take it. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. If you're going to call someone sleepy, you should do it. If um, Jody Brissoff says, if Speaker Johnson does what needs to be done, I think Democrats will save him. Yes, you, I just said that. And I think, I, I want to know if you think the poll is up. Should Democrats save MAGA Mike Johnson speakership? The poll is up. Vote. Also hit the thumbs up. Wow. Sheila Baxter says no. Marva Mays says no. Um, De Crazy Al says, Dems should not save him. Well, what if the next person that they get in, think about this, De Crazy Al. Is it De Cray or De Crazy? De Crazy Al. What if the next person gets in there and they are even worse? My mom always said, it's the devil you know. It's the devil you know, right? So uh, they shouldn't save him. Um, so Nicholas Rame says, he won't certify I'll keep saying it, okay? I don't know. Can you imagine? This is a point. Maxwell Finer, Maxwell Finer, boom, thumbs up to you. You know why? Because you hit the nail on the head. Could you imagine someone like Matt Gates as speaker? Can you imagine someone like Matt Gates as speaker? Imagine that. You have Mike Johnson, who appears right now to be working with the Democrats somewhat. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you end up with someone like, you know who, Matt Gates. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to talk to you until I get some, some really good results, I believe, on this poll. And then, and only then, will I start to talk about the what's happening at the courts. I can't find my shared doc, by the way. If you guys can send it to me, I would really appreciate it. Te text me the shared doc. Uh, I would love um, to get it because I can't see it. I can't see it. Okay. Let's see what you guys say. I am back now to the, to the poll. Wow. Very interesting. Should Democrats save MAGA Mike Johnson speakership? 33% say yes. 62% say no. 32% say yes, yes, 62% say no. Chris Loggins says, uh, no, don't save him. Dr. Dew says, hell no. Lady H. Hanna says, no, I don't trust him. Wow, why don't you trust him? I mean, look, he's not going to be, I know you guys are probably somewhat liberal, right? But he's not going to ever be a Democrat. He's never ever going to be liberal, liberal. He is a conservative Republican. Nicholas Raim says, Gates would be horrible. Matt Gates would be horrible. Can you imagine a, a government trying to function under a Matt Gates or, or a Marjorie Taylor Greene speakership? Because that's where they're going. That's where they want to end up. Stack in Florida. Stack in Florida says, I'm dim. And I say, yes, save him if he plays ball with the Dems and does the opposite of what MT, MTG and Gates want. I wonder if MTG is pulling all this to try to make herself speaker. You are reading my mind, Shaq in FL. You're reading my mind. Maybe that's what they're setting this up. And can you imagine, you already have a sort of shadow government, right? A shadow speaker in people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates. And then all of a sudden they're actually going to be running the house. Okay. Um, pressure flipper Z Don Biden is too old question mark. Uh, look, that's up for Joe Biden to decide if Joe Biden still wants to run for president. If he still wants to be president, uh, in his eighties, that's Joe Biden's business. If he feels up to it, if he's doing a good job, which he is, the economy's great. Crime is down. The lowest unemployment happened under, do you know the lowest unemployment we've, I think, pretty much in history happened under Joe Biden? I think unemployment now is at 3.6%, I believe. It's low. It's low. And that's Joe Biden. So um, Timmy says he is sneaky Pete. I don't know what he's talking, what you're talking about. Oh, well, 08 Kit says Hakeem Jeffries. 
Um, yeah, okay, but Democrats aren't in the majority. Republicans are not going to elect a Democratic Speaker of the House when they are in the majority as Republicans. It might, that would be nice, right? If you could, it would be an interesting thing to have, but that is not going to happen. Sandra Kelly said, wish Hakeem Jeffries would have run for president. Okay, that's great. That's a whole nother show though. Arizona is, is a sure win for Biden. That is what Lady D Wisdom says. And that's talking about what's happening with the um, abortion legislation going on across the country. That's what's happening with that. Okay, so let me look at and see what I have for you guys and so who I need to thank here. I want to thank Use. I also want to thank Doc Electronic. Doc Electronic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate you supporting independent media. So, um, and thank you. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. We like it. Okay. So, uh, Jenny Jupiter says, I bet more people resign. That's interesting. Biden may move slow, but his mind is still functioning. Pen. Thank you. I agree with that. My mom is 82 and still kicking. Um, still as sharp as a tag. Don, you are number one again. O- 08 Kit, thank you very much. Marcy Deneau says, oh boy, do I miss you, Don. I miss you too. Um, so, Malzilla, man, these names, what happened to Pete and Bob and Joe? Don, do you think there is a correlation between low unemployment and low crime rates? Yeah, of course there's a correlation. People have more money in their pockets. They have more money to spend. They don't have to steal things. I mean, there is some correlation. Absolutely. Thank you, Nicholas Ryan. Age is just a number. You know what what I'm saying? Thank you, Bama Girl, for uh, the thumbs up. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Uh, Chris Logain says, narrow majority. Um, Okay. Uh, And then just a little bit more. Biden is a seasoned politician, knows the playbook to win. That's what Lady D Wisdom says. It's very interesting considering he has such obstruction and he has such loony right Republicans there, like we just mentioned, that he's doing so well. Okay, let's talk about why I was singing. Oh, halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. Why is that? That's because we have six jurors. Can you believe that? Six jurors. And guess what? So he swore in... Those jurors, I think he swore in six or may have sworn in three. I'm not sure. Let me let me get my information correct here. So he has six jurors. And let me get my info. He has sworn in the first six jurors have been selected. Yes. We're halfway to a full panel, not counting alternates. Judge Marchand swore in six jurors asking him if they would decide uh, the case against Trump to the best of their ability and follow the evidence. The jurors were asked to come back on Monday at 9.30. They were instructed not to talk to others about the case. So if he is saying, I need you to come back Monday at 9.30, he thinks that this whole jury process is going to be over, that they will be in place, which is very interesting. Before I move on, the poll says um, 63% say no, uh, Democrats should not say MAGA Mike Johnson, okay? 27% say yes. All right. Uh, I am going to end that poll. Thank you very much. I think that what you guys should do is make sure you hit the thumbs up. So now let's talk about jurors. And I'm going to say, would you, before I talk about the antics. So Judge Marchand said, go home, come back Monday. Remember, on Wednesday, he sees other uh, other cases. He takes other cases, and so Thursday and Friday, I would imagine that there's going to be more jury selection, and they'll they'll you know um, close things up, tie things up. Would you? I'm asking, would you? Because he the judge said, "Hey, go home, come back Monday, and do not talk about the case to others." Can you imagine that you got selected to be a juror? on the Donald Trump case, the first president to be sitting for a criminal case, and you're not gonna tell people? Come on now, tell the truth. That's the new poll. Would you tell people that you were serving on a jury for Donald Trump 
secretly, would you secretly tell people that you were serving on a jury for Donald Trump? Yes or no? Come on, would you do it? I don't know, man, that would be tough. That would be tough. Lee says difficult, but can be done. Um, right, okay, Marcy M224, oh my gosh, AKA Leopard Lady, my goodness. Can you guys get shorter names? I, they're cool. Uh, Marcy, Marcy says, yes, I would have to stay home and away from people. I mean, come on, right? Uh, it's, so yeah, right. Yeah, right. Someone said, um, why won't they allow cameras in the courtroom? That's something else. So I think people are saying, oh, there's some people are saying, no, I would not. I would not. Rose D says, I would not. Boulay Sombre says, no. Ali Samuel says, no. Um, Alicia Nato says, I would be petrified. I'll struggle to keep my mouth shut. Sandy W says, no, I wouldn't because they tell someone and the info will be easier to find uh, for people to bully me online. So Cindy P says, I got a federal jury summoned yesterday, not in New York, but I definitely, but it definitely made me wonder. Huh. A golf Twitter says, I would say nothing until it was over because I would love the opportunity. Amy Michelle says, I would tell my pets, LOL. Don uh, Quinones says, if I were ordered by the judge, I would not. Riley says, no chance. I'm telling anyone who... No chance. I'm telling anyone who'll listen, right? I don't know. I would try, but I might be all in the barbershop. Mm, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Let me tell you something. You know that case? <laughs> you know the Donald Trump case down in, on Center Street, the courthouse in Manhattan? I'm going to be on the jury. I'm going to be on the jury. I'm going to be on the jury. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Don't lie. Larry Lee said no, because it could mean my life. It could mean my very life. The Magus would probably get me. OK, so that's that's what Larry Lee says. Vonda Barton says, I would love to be on the jury. I would write a book afterwards. Hey, you can do that. Uh, Geneva Jackson says, hell no. But Trump does belong in jail. AJ says, no way. Okay, AJ, no way. You guys are easy. Uh, Brian, Brian Perdomo, Perdomo says, also introducing potential for a mistrial. Yes, I know. I'm just asking. Vonda Barton says, I would tell my husband. Now, Vonda, you're not supposed to tell anybody, not even your husband. Can you tell your spouse? Would you tell your spouse? Tim, you would tell me? See, that's the problem, because he could tell me, and then it's like my mom would say, you can't keep water on your stomach. <laughs> what goes in comes out. Or did she say, you can't keep sugar water on your stomach? Whatever. Let me know what the old saying is. Uh, Jay and Anthony says, you are funny. Uh, listen, life should be lived. You should People should laugh, and it should be joy. Uh, Jay Smirkin says, I'd be scared for my life. Why would you be scared for your life? What is that? What is that? So I don't know. So here is what um, 08 Kit says. I'm not scared of Donald Trump. You don't like, oh, you don't like my music said. I would keep it a secret and then write a bestseller. A lot of people want to write books. I would take the privilege very seriously. Thank you, Sarah Habib. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Carmel Eyes is, is just laughing. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up button. I appreciate it. And also, I appreciate all of you who are donating to independent media. That is great. Keep us on the air. Uh, I would like to tell anyone except my husband and kids. I wouldn't tell anyone except my husband and kids and tell them not to tell anyone else. Too many MAGA cult members in my family and friends. That is, uh, again, stacking in FL. Stacking. The judge told you not to tell anyone. And then you're going to tell your husband and kids. And then your husband is going to say, my wife told me not to tell anybody. And then your kids are going to say, my mom told me not to tell anybody, but I'll. And then everybody, and then they told two friends, and they told two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. It's like the, um, was it Brecht or Claire? I don't know. It was a commercial with Farrah Fawcett back in the 1970s. You guys aren't old enough for that, um, about a hair shampoo. And they told two friends, and they told two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, Angelina Knox says, mum's the word. Christina B, yep, meaning I would tell. Um, 
Keeney says, I would not want to be the reason for a mistrial. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let's move on. So here's let's go with some of the antics that happened in the court today. Because again, as I said, as of 3.20 p.m., the first six jurors have been selected. We are halfway uh, to a full jury, not counting the alternates. They do have to pick some alternates. 900 people. Woo, Don, you rock, Don. Thank you very much. We have uh, 900 today. We had 1,100 the other day, or well, and we had 2,000 uh, the other day. So it's going to fluctuate, but I enjoy it. Look, I could have five people on here. I can have a conversation. As you notice, I can hold a conversation with, with myself. I wish I could talk to you guys. Like you could call in or be on the thing. We'll try to see if we can work that out. Okay, so here's the update. Like yesterday, according to my notes, Trump is periodically leaning back in his chair, closing his eyes. It is difficult to say whether he has fallen asleep or if he's just resting his eyes. Trump has signed a form to waive his rights to be present for sidebars so he doesn't have to get up and go over for sidebars and meet with his attorney. Those are meetings that help between the lawyers from both sides and the judge to discuss non-public matters. Trump's defense team putting up a fight on, group of, on a group of jurors that sat for Vadir before lunch because there are a number of jurors that have social media posts for, that are very much contrary. This is a quote. There's, there's a number of jurors that we have social media posts for that are very much contrary to what they said in court. That is what Trump lawyer Todd Blanche said. So here's the thing. Today in court was all about social media. So be careful what you post about social media because it can come back to haunt you. And I say that because a lot of these jurors are being questioned are being challenged and are potentially being eliminated because of things that they have posted on social media. Per the New York Times, Trump will, I'll talk about that. Okay, so anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. But Judge Merchant read a Facebook post aloud in court that Blanche, um, which is Trump's attorneys, Trump, one of his lawyers, took issue with. The potential juror posted it on Saturday after the 2020 election when Joe Biden was declared the winner. The judge said it appeared to be two screen grabs at an outdoor location, and it read, I have to get in the car and spread the honking cheers. There's an actual dance party on 96th Street. One prospective juror was dismissed after Merchant asked him about an anti-Trump post to his Facebook account in 2017. Good news, Trump lost his court battle on his unlawful travel ban, the post read. Get him out and lock him up, the post continued. So Judge Merchant granted Blanche's challenge and dismissed the potential juror for cause. So there you go. So my question is for the poll, I'm going to do a new poll. And the poll is, should jurors, potential jurors, be dismissed because of social media posts? Should those social media posts be held against potential jurors? Should they? That's my question. Because... You do have freedom of speech. Also, you're supposed to take jury, jury duty seriously, but you're supposed to have freedom of speech. So Tammy says, yes. Tammy, you think, you think that potential jurors should be dismissed because of social media posts. So does Debbie Hagan. So does Lady D. Wisdom. Um, so do Alicia says, yes. S. Fisher says, clearly. Isadora Smith says, yes. B. Alexandra says yes. And Akush Nick says, depends on the, on, on the context. I agree. It depends on the context. Randall says, it depends on the post. Steph Jones says, have to be. Snap Vengish says, yes. Christine B. says, no. Why shouldn't people be dismissed because of their social media posts? Aaron Botcher, Aaron Botcher says, no, we live in a society. I, I kind of agree with that. But that does tell about your mindset, things that you post about. Remember, the former president was kicked off of Twitter because of things that he was saying. He ended up having to establish his own social media network because of things that he was posting, because he got kicked off. Kira Liner says, depends on the content. content really? So uh, Aw79 says no. Spirit Survival says yes. Yes. It would, this is what Bolo says, be on the lookout. For what, Bolo? It would set a double standard. Look at what Trump posts. 
Man, you guys are reading my mind. Look at what Trump posts. I can, eight, eight, eight Kit says, zero eight Kit says, yes, because they are told not to discuss things that go on in court in any way. So I think you're talking about should you tell? Yes, because they are on Truth Social. Yes, because what if they're on Truth Social? That's what Rainey says are. Debbie Hagan says, let's say it was you on trial. Would you want a hater on your jury? That makes sense. I'm telling you, though, today was all about social media posts. Even the, the former president is getting in trouble because of things that he posted on social media, because he posted on social media about the judge and about the judge's family. So he's getting in trouble with that. They are going, they are asking the three posts that he did. They're asking, I, I believe, for, I think it's $3,000 each. I forget exactly what the amount is. I'll find it. And they're asking him to do it three different times because of what he posted on social media. So if Donald Trump can get in trouble for social media, then why can't a juror? After it became clear how Trump's lawyers plan to challenge prospective jurors for cause, uh, Joshua Singlass, a prosecutor with the district attorney's office, firmly argued that a person's prior social media post shouldn't be used as a litmus test for their deep-seated political feelings. And then Trump smirks, as Joshua Singlass argues, Steinglass argues that the Facebook posts don't prove bias. He argued that. So I don't know. I'm kind of torn about this. I'm torn about this. Here's something else that happened. There was a husband bias in the social media post. I want to know if you guys think it was a husband bias. Trump lawyer Todd Blanche asked a third juror about a social media post that her husband shared, including an anti-Trump video and a photo of Trump from 2015. The judge allowed the juror to stay. Judge Merchant read a post from a juror's husband, and one of the posts contained a side-by-side -side photo of Trump and Obama on March 23rd, 2016. It says, I don't think this is what they meant, that orange is the new black. <laughs> I mean, you have to admit that that's pretty funny. A photo of Donald Trump and Obama side by side. I don't think this is what they meant. <laughs> that orange is the new black. Now, come on, y'all. That is really, really funny. Um, so <laughs> judge read the post. Trump looked straight ahead. Didn't appear to have much of a reaction to that. The judge then said that they're not going to go through the trial process like this and told Blanche that all that needs to be asked is if the issue at hand would affect her ability to be fair and impartial. If this is the worst thing that her husband posted, his humor, albeit not very good, humor from eight years ago, Merchant said. Trump's lawyer Blanche challenged a juror about social media posts, one which says Trump indicted in documents case, to which the juror added, no one is above the law. He also shared an AI video mocking Trump, and then that juror was dismissed. Social media posts. Careful what you post about social media. A right to free speech. If you do something humorous, like post a, a, a photo with Donald Trump and um, President Barack Obama, and it says it's not true that orange is the new black, then should that be allowed? It may show bias. I don't know. I don't know. But I have questions about it. I have no idea. So I want to say that um, I, I am enjoying, you guys have been mentioning, my relationship or the collaborations that I've been doing with Midas Touch Network and Ben Maisalas over at the Midas Touch. And I'm so happy that you guys like that collaboration. You're going to see many more. So I want to thank them, the Midas Touch community. They've been posting about us in their community posts. So thank you for coming over. We really appreciate it. We actually, and also I want to, uh, thank all the the Young Turks folks as well for coming over. We we moved up an hour because we don't want to compete with our friends. And our friends go live at six o'clock. Sometimes we may have to, but we moved it because we are we're very respectful um, of our audience. If you because sometimes you may want to watch me live, sometimes you may want to watch Jake live, sometimes you may want to watch Ben Marcellus live, and so we're very um, conscious of that. So thank you for coming over, and we try not to compete and go up against uh, our, our, they're not really our competitors, they're our friends. 
So Kira Lerner has a question. Kira says, Don, reporters are revealing a lot of biographical details about the jurors. I know, right? Where are they getting this information? Relatives, where they work, what they're wearing, et cetera. Do you think this is of news value? I, quite frankly, no. No. I think you should keep this process as, as confidential and as close to the vest as possible. Listen, now, I was joking about saying, oh, you know what? Guess what? Hey, don't tell me. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell anybody. But, you know, I got I w- actually I would not do that. I would not do that. I don't if I, I don't even know if I would tell Tim. I'd have to probably go stay at a hotel or something because I would, wouldn't want to open my mouth. But I, I wouldn't do it. Um, I don't think that is necessary to get all that information. And that is the danger. When we talked about cameras in the courtroom and all the cameras that are out there, that's the danger with having so much information, and so much access to people's uh, personal and private business. Um, Cindy D says, what do you think about Trump trying to get black males on the jury? Um, look, that is what attorneys do. That is what you do when you're trying to defend yourself. Right. That's what happens in a court case. You try to pick the people you think would be best uh, for the outcome that you want. Um, It has been said with the polling. And if you look at comments from African-American men, that there is an affinity for Trump among a group of African-American men. And the polls, the polls show that it's growing. I don't know if they're real or not, but just because they have an affinity doesn't mean that they're going to vote for him. And just because they have an affinity does not mean that they would judge in his favor. as a juror, okay, that they would favor him as a juror. I don't know. Uh, Jordy1994 says, hi, Don, could you do a special on Project 25? Um, Project 2025, yes, we will be talking about Project 2025 a lot. I would like to understand the risk since we might get Trump back. Thank you. There are big risks in that. He wants to dismantle the FBI, the Justice Department. He also wants to be able to um, um, apply the Insurrection Act. He wants all powers. He, pro- he wants to stay in office for as long as possible. Uh, a nationwide ban on abortion. He want, they want to get rid of por- pornography. All you have to do is look up, just do an internet search on Project 2025, and you'll understand what's going on. And we will do that. Steph Jones says, Don, who do you watch for news? I watch me. <laughs> um, quite frankly, I'll tell you who I watch for news. I don't watch a lot of broadcasts anymore. I don't watch a lot of cable. Occasionally, I will tune into... Um, my friend Rachel Maddow, I'll tune in to um, my friend Joy Reid. I will tune in. So, sometimes I will watch Fox News because I want to hear and see what they're saying. But mostly now I've been watching, uh, getting information from, uh, I watch the Young Turks. Um, I watch Pod Save America. Um, and I do listen to some conservative uh, streaming shows and blogs. Um, but lately, as this has been heating up, and after the whole Elon Musk thing, they just sort of went off the deep end with personal attacks. And I can't watch it because I don't think that we should be in the business of personally attacking people. People are, you know, make their their bones. They try to gain, you know, more popularity, more viewers, um, more clicks by attacking me personally and attacking other people personally. And I don't like that. I think it's trashy. I think it's tacky. I think if you don't have something good to say about someone, especially if they're not bothering you, then don't say anything at all. That's how I feel. I have a lot of haters out there and you know who you are. They watch the show all the time. They want to criticize every, every move I make, they want to do it. I'm not about that. So you do your thing. I'll do mine. Um, So again, Midas touch network. I do listen to the Midas touch network because they do. They've got some great journalists over there. And, and a couple of them we have been having on our show. Great journalists over there. They're doing great work. They have former prosecutors and judges. And a lot of them are contributors uh, on, on um, CNN and MSNBC and, and, and even Fox News. I read the New York Times. I read the Washington Post. I read the Wall Street Journal. I read the Financial Times. I listen to the daily podcast every day, every morning when I wake up. They have amazing um, content on what's happening in Israel and Gaza. They talk about things that are not necessarily in the news or in the zeitgeist, and they bring it up, and then uh, it expands your mind. So uh, thank you to Ralph Stiff. Thank you to Aaron Botcher. Thank you, Jordy1994. Thank you, Kira Lerner. I really appreciate it. So um, 
Midas, mighty, mighty, Midas, mighty. Thanks. Midas, mighty. I appreciate it. Listen, you guys are great. I, 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 again, I can't tell you how much that I appreciate the Midas touch people. Um, so I don't know. I'm sure someone is communicating and saying, Hey, give us a shout out. So Midas, Midas touch people come over. If you're, when you're done watching them and, and all of the folks over there, come on over and then we'll send you back. So, um, I appreciate you guys uh, with your comments and I appreciate you asking me questions. So now I want to know what you want to know about today's trial, because I found it interesting to the, the, about yours. I find the whole issue of social media very interesting. So according to the New York Times, the four person who was selected today, they, they selected a four person. Um, that's juror number one. And this, and this is so much information, right? The person who asked me, I forget what your name was, he said, should there be so much information? Do I have it here about the jurors? Because we already know who the four person is. And we already have information on the four person, which I think is astounding. According to the New York Times, the four person who's already been select, selected, that's juror number one, the de facto leader of the group, who will likely help steer deliberations, works, this is crazy, I already know, in sales, enjoys the outdoors, originally from Ireland. How do we know that? One of the jurors is a young black woman who has friends with strong opinions about Trump. She says she's not a political person, though. She appreciates that the former president speaks his mind. That is what many black males, the ones you read about in the paper, or you see on the news who say that they like Donald Trump or they support him. They, they like that he speaks his mind. That's what they like about him. That's usually the number one thing. So she likes that she, he speaks his mind. And I think people, especially people who are part of the underserved community, part of minorities in this country, feel that they are often stifled um, and they don't have a, a platform or a voice. And so they appreciate people who speak their minds, who aren't afraid to go up against authority. Um, and I know, listen, every black woman in my life speaks their mind. And it's intimidating to a lot of people and black men. It's intimidating to a lot of people because lots of times people don't understand how people of color communicate. It's like, you know, my Italian friends say, we talk loud. We talk with our hands, right? African-Americans talk loud. We speak with our hands as well. We have a way of communicating that people may not necessarily understand. And it may be intimidating to some people, especially if you're not used to being around black people or if you're not used to being around other people. You don't understand how they communicate. Um, my friend Yashar. <laughs> His mom hits him with sandals. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So there's also another uh, is a young corporate lawyer who likes to hike, run, and read. The New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. That's He likes to read the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, papers that I read. Another, when questioned by one of Trump's lawyers, said that she had no opinion of the former president, especially in the courtroom. He will be treated as anyone else can be treated, and no one is above the law, she said, adding, I am here for my civic duty. I am here to listen to the facts. You better speak on it, young lady, because that's true. Okay, enough of the notes. So I'm so happy that you guys are here again uh, to talk about all of these things, all of these issues that, that are to the fore, that we're going to bring to the fore, and talk about the trial every single day. So... Um, so, uh, I'm going to MZ lady. Thank you. Vicky H. Thank you. And all the Midas touch viewers that just joined. Hello. 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 Thank you so much. Identify yourself in the comments. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Midas touch. Thank you. Uh, I, I, we love you guys so much. I love that. I, can I tell you again how I met Ben Micellis? And if you guys aren't subscribed to the Midas touch, Go subscribe to them as well. Make sure you get people to subscribe here and go su subscribe to them as well. Because let me tell you, when I started doing this, um, YouTube and others, YouTube, Spotify, iHeart, um, all of the folks, Apple, they said the best way to build your audience and build your community is by going to other people, going on other people's shows, other people's podcasts, other people's streaming shows uh, and become a community with them. And so that's the best way to do it. So I, they set up a collaboration between the Midas Touch and me. And man, oh man, Ben Marcella said, um, of course I'll do it, but I want to speak to Don first. And I 
called him and he said, I just want to tell you that I've loved your work for such a long time. I think that you're a great journalist. I'm so happy to have you in this arena, in this, uh, on the street, doing streaming. It's amazing to have a, a journalist like you of such caliber. And I, any way that I can help you out, all you have to do is let me know. Just text me or give me a call. And guess what? When I need a guest, if I need advice, if I need opinion, if I just whatever, whatever I need, I text the guys over at Midas Touch, boom, right away. Good, just good people, and they don't want anything in return. And so all I'm saying is when someone is good to you, you're good to them, and I appreciate you guys. And make sure if you, if, if for the, the, the community that I've had, the 100 or so thousand people that we have built, we built 100,000 from nothing because I had no, I had no streaming viewers. Remember, I was in traditional media. This is all new to me. In 24 days, we got to 100,000 subscribers, subscribers on YouTube. We had three, almost 4 million viewers, people that had viewed our content in just 24 days and less than a month. Thank you. I love that you guys are part of this community. And so I'm gonna start to, I'm gonna take some notes. Um, tracks and relax. I love it. Now let's get let's get into the comments, right? Because people go, you know, when you see someone, you go, I went straight to the comments. Let's go straight to the comments, okay? Straight to the comments. What did Trax and Relax say? I enjoyed the roasted sink. Chink. We didn't roast Chink. I love talking to Chink. I know you guys get all mad, but I do believe that you hate watch Chink. And you actually secretly like him. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Michael Riley says, the big show with Don Lemon. Yeah, you're right, Michael Riley. Thank you so much. Denise Pearson says, we love you, Don. Susie D says, uh, if you're not Haba and revenge watching this, please hit the like button. Amen. Thank you very much. I would say hit the like button. I don't know what that means, Haba, whatever. Midas Touch does want something in return. Fight for democracy. Amen. That's what Jody Bristow says. Yes, they want us to fight for democracy. I agree with that 350%. They are fighting for democracy. Um, it's Ray Smith says, man, you all should get together. I agree. I think we should do, I wish we could do like a live show where the Midas Touch and I are on together and it can run on both networks at the same time. And we can talk about how people should be joining. I also, oh, I forgot to mention the other folks that I, I list. My, one of my favorite people that I have been watching for years on streaming is David Packman. So, so smart. So intelligent, so informed. Um, Brian Tyler Cohen, amazing. Luke Beasley, young fella, amazing, amazing, amazing. These are folks that I, I tune into. And again, like I said, I, if, listen, in the, initially when things happened in Israel, I was listening to Ben Shapiro, but then the whole thing with Candace Owens is just, it sort of, I don't know, it broke my brain. I, I, could, I had to stop doing it. Um, Sandra Kelly says, you are blessed and, and worth it. I may start tuning back into those folks, but after Elon and the personal attacks um, from the people who say that they want free speech and they want people who disagree with them and they want people with other, other opinions and, they, and then they call you um, names, you know, um, you know, like the F word or the N word or, or things like that or stupid or whatever. I don't, I don't do that to people. Now, if you're in the public arena, like a politician, like a Donald Trump or whatever, okay, fair game. But if you are someone who is just another um host of a streaming show or host of a podcast, or uh, I'm not going to call you names. I, I didn't even call um, Elon Musk names. That's just not me. I think we need a better dialogue. You can, you can choose your words wisely and um, get your point across with people. Lisa M says the Midas bros are the best. I know, right? Aren't they great? Beautiful, nice styles, beautiful one styles. That's what it says. You are a good man, Mr. Lemon. Thank you very much. Um, Gail Rousen says, Midas Touch loves you. Yes, they do. Flawed, not fake. Hi, Don. Uh, Isaac Smith says, it's a community. It is a community. And you know what I appreciate? What, what people don't understand. Thank you, Eunice, by the way. Thank you, Eunice. Thank you so much. What people don't understand is that with these platforms, the people who own these platforms have control of the algorithm. They get to decide who sees you. They get to boost you. 
they get to suppress you. When I did the interview with Elon Musk, what did he say? If there's hate speech on the platform, we suppress it, which means they have the ability to manipulate their algorithm, right? So if there are things they want you to see, they amplify. If there are things they don't want you to see, they suppress, right? So if you can do that with speech that you hate, what are you doing for speech that you love? What are you doing? And they're talking about all these social platforms and also Twitter. What are you doing for people that you agree with? For people, for things that you personally agree with, right? What are you doing? Are you amplifying it? Is it a fair algorithm? As Tucker Carlson says, just asking questions. I'm just asking questions. Do you amplify the things that you love and do you suppress the things that you hate? And I don't necessarily mean hate speech. What y'all think? Let me know what you think. But this is what I love about the YouTube algorithm. The YouTube algorithm doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care if you're a big deal, that you're a big deal, Don Lemon, former CNN anchor. It doesn't care. If you come on this platform, you have to build from the ground up. It is grassroots. And they will help you. They will offer you advice. Other people on the platform like Ben, like David, like Brian, like Jake. When I first left CNN, Jake called me up and said, let's have lunch. I met him in Soho. We had lunch. We had an early dinner, late lunch. Anything you can, I can do to help you. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm here, which is amazing. Because, you know, that didn't happen so much when I was in traditional news. Everyone was sort of jockeying, a lot of people, not everyone, jockeying to you know get to the top, get to the top, be on TV, always be on camera, always do whatever. How can I get this seat? Who's, you know, what? Th that was never me. I always loved giving people opportunities. It didn't matter who you were, man, woman, black, white, Latino, it doesn't, didn't matter, Asian. I always loved giving people opportunities because a lot of people helped me out along the way. And so, you know, some people said, well, you're being too nice. That person's going to take your job. I was never worried about that because I am confident in my abilities and my talent. I can sit here and talk. I could talk. I could sit here on this computer, <laughs> on this camera, and talk until next Monday. Not everybody can do that. <laughs> Not everybody can do that. There are very few people on earth who can do that. So that is a skill. And guess what? I can be jovial and do whatever. And then I can go and slip into journalist mode and be serious because people are multidimensional. And um, so I think that's what makes me an interesting person. And I think that's what makes me a talented person. But I say all that to say, I'm so happy to be on this platform where people are looking out for each other. It is amazing. And where um, you have to have the support of a community or otherwise you die on the vine, you wither on the vine. You have to offer people things that are interesting. But the thing that, that you have to do most, people want content that informs them. They don't necessarily have to be entertained. I don't have to have on a tie and a suit and pretend and, and offer you know all of these sort of things where you pretend, I have to pretend, I have to pretend to put on a suit, I got to do the face full of makeup and I do. You don't have to do that. And I do think that being at home during the pandemic and watching people zoom in or you know FaceTime into different networks or whatever, I do think that that actually helped social media and helped streaming media and alternative media because people got used to seeing people in their homes. This is my living room. I'm inviting you guys into my living room every night. I could go into a studio. I have a studio. I did a show. Make sure you tune in to the show earlier uh, today where um, I had two of the Midas Touch uh, folks on from earlier today um, and Tara Setmeyer, who I used to uh, work with at CNN. And we had a fascinating conversation about day two, about some of the things we're talking about now. But that was a produced show in a studio with all the graphics and all this stuff or whatever. And then I come here and I invite you into my living room because I want to talk to you and I want to answer your questions. Um, um, make sure you hit the thumbs up, please. And so Jody, thank you so much. Midas Touch does want something. You say fight for democracy. Maggie says, I love Purple Hearts. I love to get done. You have to have your own show back on the Midas Touch Network. Well, <laughs> you have to have your own show on back on the Midas Touch. I have my own show here. So we'll see. Maybe there'll be some, some we'll see. Never say never. 
Dale Ennis, I'm here because of Ben. Love your commentary. Thank you very much. See, Ben invited folks over from the Midas Touch Network. I really love you guys. Um, Marcella says, Lincoln Project does great streams too. Yes, the Lincoln Project is amazing. I love the Lincoln Project. I know some of the people over there. Tara Setmeyer is one of the, I think, a founding members, or I forget, or I forget what her exact title is, from the Lincoln uh, Project that she was on today. Jared says, say hello to Fox producers in here real quick. Hi, Fox producers. I'm sure this is going to end up on one of their shows, one of the hater shows, but guess what? They don't understand what we're doing. We're just building a community and we're talking. Um, the Lincoln Project makes good ads. That's Austin Art. Thank you so much. Um, Jake Paper Dragon says, it's much more entertaining and interesting to see people in their home setting uh, and dressed in every days. I agree with you, J Jackie Paper Dragon. Um, Susie, Susan Tire Pack says, uh, also really American. So here's the thing, guys. If there are people who you watch, especially on, on YouTube or you listen to on Spotify, you listen to on iHeart or Apple or any of those platforms, and you want me to have them on my show, you want me to do a collaboration with them, um, let me know and I'll do it. Uh, Night of Nye says, faux producers. Okay. Um, Martha Warmack says subscriptions are free. Memberships cost though. Subscriptions are great. So here's the thing. I'm going to end in soon. Okay. Oh, so Mark Elias is physically saving America directly through the courts. Uh, that is Yashelle. Thank you. Uh, dream big, dream big. Who said that? Oh my gosh. It went away. I lost it. Um, uh, Lucia Delia said, Don, your husband is a lucky guy. He better, he better try to, you better recognize Tim. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany Lemieux says, I love your platform, Don. You're doing great work. Thank you. Um, Dragons Aurora says, Jesse Dalmore. Okay. Kevin Harrell says, appreciate Don. Proud of you. And thanks for, uh, thanks to the Midas for networking with you. I'm looking forward to the work you guys do together. Thank you so much. Um, Trey Black says, David Packman. Um, Norma Asfel says, please get Mary Trump on. Okay, Mary Trump is great. I used to have her on my CNN show. So listen, but I would also like, if you listen to some conservative folks, I would love to get some conservatives here. I would love to. Should I talk to MAGA folks? Hmm. Now, I don't mean just like MAGA. Yeah, well, that's sort of, Extreme, right? Okay, so here's the thing. Someone asked, how did we get the dogs? I'm going to talk about the dogs. So Tim and I um, were dating. We weren't engaged yet. And every time we saw a dog, Tim wanted um, uh, some sort of doodle, golden doodle or something or whatever. And I was just like, dogs? I've had so many dogs growing up and even as an adult. And I said, Tim, dogs are a lot of work. Dogs are a lot of work when it's, you know, 10 degrees below zero, you're not going to want to go outside and walk the dog. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And he's just always falling in love with dogs. So um, we went to a, an event out um, in, on Long Island. It was called Save the Swans. Hilarious. Um, swans need saving, I guess. So we were at an event and this woman said, hey, you're Don Lemon. I said, yes, I am. And, she, and I, she said, I love what you do. And I said, what do you do? And she says, I help to rescue dogs. And I said, oh, great. I said, ah, my boyfriend, want, we weren't fiancés yet. I said, my boyfriend wants a dog and it's all he talks about. She goes, oh, well, I can help you out. And I said, oh, you can? And she goes, yeah. I, she said, what are you looking for? And I said, some sort of doodle, poodle, something cute and small, but not too foofy. Uh, and she said, oh, well, I have some, you know, hey, take a look. Let me, let me look through my phone. And she looked through her phone and she started sending me pictures of dogs. She sent me two pictures and one was kind of like a schnauzer, like a miniature schnauzer. And one was um, a black poodle-ish doodle looking dog. And I was like, wow, these dogs are really, really cute. So during that time, I could not find my social security card <laughs> telling you this crazy story. And so my driver's license had expired because I was waiting for my new card to come in and, and I didn't have my driver's license. So I had to wait for my social security card to come. So Tim was driving and I kept telling him, I was like, hey, I want to take you somewhere. Let's go somewhere. And um, 
uh, I was telling him how to go. And he was like, why don't you just tell me where you're going? I grew up out here and I know where to go. Just tell me where to go. Because I was sort of giving him just turn directions, like turn right here, go right here. And so then finally, we, we, and we get into a huge fight because I don't want to tell him. I'm trying to surprise him that I'm going to go and I want him to look at these dogs at the Southampton Animal Shelter. We were driving to the Southampton Animal Shelter, but he had no idea. So we get to where you turn off to go to the Southampton Animal Shelter, and then he sort of looks at me and goes, ah, oh, uh, are you really doing this? And I didn't say anything. So we went to the Southampton Animal Shelter, um, and, and I honked, and they came out, and we stood next to this little pen where they bring the dogs out and to play. So they brought the little schnauzer out or whatever the first, and he was cute. We liked him. And then they brought out Boomer. And they brought out Boomer and literally tears came to Tim's eyes and he said, oh my God, he's so cute. He's so cute. I love him. I love him. I love him. And so we said, we'll take him. And so we went in to adopt him and I said, I wonder what we're going to name him. We had all kinds of names because he was so dark. He's gray now. I said, Could we, should we call him whatever? We, should, we thought we could call him Blackie. And then we were like, oh, people are going to think it's weird. And so we were walking out of the animal shelter and I just for some reason I said, Boomer. And he responded. And we named him Boomer as we walked out of the animal shelter. And so we got him in July of 2018 and we've had him ever since. So then I'll tell you one more story. Boomer uh, had separation anxiety because he was a stray. I don't know how, who would put a dog like that on the street. So we would go to work and he would just cry, 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 cry. So I said, he, he needs a friend. So, um, I went back out to the Southampton Animal Shelter and I didn't tell Tim because they were sending me pictures of dogs and they sent me a picture of a dog that was eventually named Barkley. And so I went out, but I had to bring Boomer with me because we had to make sure they got along. So I saw this little dog, the white dog, Boomer's a black dog, I saw the white dog and we went out, I went out by myself to the Southampton Animal Shelter and I made sure they got along, they played together and then I drove them and then I went and let them play in the backyard for a little bit a bit at the house in Long Island. And then I drove back into the city, into the apartment, and he walked into the apartment, and Tim said, oh, my God, he's really cute. I love him, too. And then Barkley became our second dog, and we would go to work, and Boomer and Barkley would not care. They played. That took care of the separation anxiety. They became brothers right away. And then during the pandemic, what, four years later? During the pandemic, um, maybe five years later, um, the Southampton Animal Shelter called us and said, Don, we're having trouble. Um, Don and Tim, we're having trouble fostering dogs in the beginning of the, the, the pandemic because that, towards the end, everybody was adopting a dog. And they said, Don, we're having trouble fostering dogs. We have this little dog. Can you just foster him for us um, during the pandemic until you know, we can we get back to normal? By the way, two of those dogs Barkley and then the one we fostered were both about to go to kill shelters. They were in kill shelters and they were rescued by the thing and they were going to go back. And so um, he came home with, a, Tim brought him home. I didn't know he was going to do it. I was like, we, we can't do it. And then Tim went in and got him anyways. And so um, he went to get him and he didn't like me, but anyway, and we named him Gus Gus. And they're, oh, there they are. Hi, Barkley. Hi, Boomer. They're in here, right here. I don't know if you can see them. Let me, can you hand me? And this is Gus Gus. By the way, Gus Gus has been sick. That's Gus Gus. Gus Gus is 15. He was 11 when we got him. Come here, Boomer. Come here, Barkley. Come here. This is Boomer. This is Barkley. Barkley, say hi. That's Barkley. Say hi. Say hi. Come on, Boomer. And this is Boomer. Okay, they're going to fight because they get they, they want attention, and that's Boomer. So, and that's the end of the show. Oh my gosh, look. <laughs> so, and they are, they have to walk and I have to go feed them because it's six o'clock. So I hope, and that is Gus barking. But anyway, I love you guys. I know this is qu quite different to be doing this, but I'm happy to, again, um, be building this community with you. I'm gonna see you on the Don Lemon Show. Make sure you watch the Don Lemon Show up now. Um, it's about today's trial, and it's our show that we do in the studio every single day. So tomorrow we have Neil deGrasse Tyson coming on the program, so make sure you watch that. He, I don't know if it's in the show, but we'll put it up on, on YouTube, I believe. He wrestles. He was a wrestler in high school, maybe in junior high school. He wrestles with a member of my staff. He also teaches us how to work a telephone. And he, he says, this is what he says. You have to tune in. He says that AI, 
right? Artificial intelligence will be the end, will end the internet. That's what he says. And you'll have to tune in to see why. I think we're going to drop it tomorrow at 1 p.m. And then I'll be back tomorrow at 5 o'clock with Today in Trump. Okay? Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Tune into the show that's up today and the one tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you to everyone um, who's donating and supporting to independent media. Bye.